Good morning. So today I am in our vegetable garden and I was going to film a different video today but I decided to go ahead and give you a quick tour of what's happening around over here because it has been raining for almost three days, three days straight and it just stopped a few minutes ago. So I thought uh, this is a perfect time. It's overcast and uh, the weather is beautiful. It's um, not too cold and not too hot it's perfect <laughs> and everything just looks lush and green now warning I do have weeds because they just grow super fast and I try to stay on top of them but it doesn't always happen so without further ado let's go ahead and start this tour this is the first bed I have to show you uh, this is the bed that you see as soon as you enter the garden I do have to edge this area over here Anyways, I planted this bed first thing in the spring. It was, we were still having frost, so I just used this uh, frost cover that you see over the top. And I planted it with some Red Cabbage Express, Purple Sicily uh, Cauliflower, and the um, <laughs> these that are super sad <laughs> right now, but they were doing great. I never actually harvest them, they just kind of went to seed and I left them i was supposed to harvest them earlier but um i just didn't have the time to uh there it's a little bit too late for them now so these are the miners lettuce um i could still harvest a few of them if i want to i guess like these but i guess i'll just plant them again for uh for the fall so you can see the cabbage is starting to head up already and this this is the first purple of Sicily cauliflower that that's the first head right here. I don't think any of them have made anything yet. I also have another row of uh, red cabbage express in the back and they're doing the same as these. And this bed I've been struggling with this bed for so many years. This always gets overtaken by the sheep sorrel and even though I use the cardboard it just keeps coming up so um, I guess I'm just gonna have to keep pulling it and I, I don't know if this is curly dog or what but this also keeps coming up over here and you can see it right there in the end but the sheep sorrel loves this weather it's um, a little bit cool and we've been having really cool nights too for this time of the year where we've been having 48 degrees and 49 degrees so but everything is doing okay it's not as good as i would like it to be this is the onion they're starting to bulb a little bit some are doing better than others and honestly i think it is the compost i feel like things have done better before i added this compost this is the compost that we purchased from a local company and I'm just not happy with it at all. I feel like everything is uh, struggling a little bit because of it, but um, next year I'm not going to be using it. And because of the rain, I keep having to come and fix these onions because the rain just keeps pushing them, <laughs> pushing them out of their... Um, out of the ground some are bulbing up you can see like these over here because of all the rain we got they leaned over so I just have to bury them a little bit these are the red onions and they're like sort of like shallots I do have to weed here this bed over here this would be okay I think I'll just have to come and fix them later <laughs> let me put these down this is what I use these are just paper clips this is what I use to hold the um, tarps with and it does a really great job not the tarp the um, uh, frost cover and it does a really great job it doesn't fly or anything uh, just any kind of paper clips would work if you're trying to figure out what to use on these things and I have some sweet alyssum lining the bed over here and in some other places I have some over there there's still very little just because of the weather and over here I sewed some carrots but half of them, they were coming up actually, and something ate them. And then this side of the bed came up. I feel like there are bugs also in this compost. 
In the back I have some gladiolas um, that I bought the corms about two, uh, last year and I never planted them from Dollar Tree and then I decided to plant them and see what happens and they're coming up. You can see them, they're pink gladiolas. I also planted some parsnip. I don't see anything coming up and uh, some um, Dalmatian peach foxglove and uh, sugar plum foxgloves on that side over there. But I thought they were coming up and then, I don't know, they just sort of disappeared. I think this might be one of them. I don't know. I'll just have to wait and see. And these are the, um, I think, French breakfast radishes. I, can, I think I can start harvesting them. You can see, I think I'm gonna take a few for inside. They can get a little bigger, but I think they're ready. If I, if I wait a little bit, I can get some bigger ones, but I can also use this time to thin them out a little bit. And I could use these in a salad today. Oh, sorry, you're not centered. There. Some of them are still small. Again, I'm not happy with the compost. I think the compost is just very disappointing. Very disappointing. Oh, look, there's one carrot growing here. I'm gonna have to reseed this again or plant something else, I don't know. And these are the uh, sugar snap peas. I planted these with the kids early this spring also, and they are just starting to flower. You can see it right here. And I put up this trellis, this trellis expands and you can put it um, either sideways or the long way if you want to put it up against a wall or something. I got this off of Amazon. I'll, I'll be leaving a link for it down in the description box below. I like it a lot. It looks beautiful, I think. And the peas are just uh, grabbing onto it super easily. Uh, but I did have to use some support to hold it up. I put this stake over here. This is not really necessary. I could actually move this and use it for the tomatoes. I put this stake and I tied some zip ties to it, the top and the bottom. And also I put this T-post over here in the middle and did the same thing and on the side over there. It just needs a little bit of support. And this is the garlic bed. I planted this. Again, I have to weed here. Um, I'm constantly waiting. It's, it's a continuous battle. <laughs> Even though I mulched, it's still, the weeds just come up super easily. So I planted the, this garlic bed uh, late, very late fall, and I planted it at night because I was running out of time, and uh, the next day it was, we're gonna have a snow, like a lot of snow, so uh, I came at night. I put up some bagged soil in here, and I fertilized and I planted the garlic and look at it, it's doing great. I can see some are starting to head up. You can see how thick this is and some still need a little bit of time. And this is just uh, garlic that I have saved from my last year's bulbs and it's store-bought garlic. You know, I started from store-bought garlic. I think in the future I'm going to be getting some seed garlic or garlic specifically labeled for planting and choose the bigger bulbs because as you can see some of the bulbs the not bulbs sorry some of the cloves that you plant if they are small they tend to give you smaller heads so anyways in this bed over here this is the fava bean they were struggling earlier but they are doing much better now i had them under uh, a cover because they do get attacked by aphids or some call them black flies but these are aphids and you can see right here they're covered with them and I'm going to be treating them somehow without having it come onto the flowers but this is what happens every single year with my fava beans and I'm not going to give up. <laughs> I'm going to treat them and uh, in a way that I'm not going to be hurting any pollinators. But they are doing great and I'm hoping to see some fruits on them or some beans. And uh, I'll have to treat them for that to happen I think because they're going to die if I don't. They were yellowing earlier. Um, you can see the bottom leaves are a little bit yellow. 
and I don't know if that's because one day I uh, turned on the water and I forgot it for many hours and I woke up at three o'clock at night and I remembered that I still had the water on so I just went <laughs> and turned it off and over here on this side uh, of this trellis we have some sweet peas also sorry not sweet peas sugar snap peas and I think I might have did I plant something here other than that I don't know but uh, over here I didn't put any labels I think I might have planted some butternut squash over here no melon um, honeydew melon over here butter butternut squash on this side and then I planted some uh, oh these are the beans yes I think that's beans yes uh, these are the long, uh, the yard long beans over here on this side and on that side over here. But because we have been having a lot of rain, they are a little bit on the yellow side. And these are the cucumbers. And um, this is the same kind of cucumbers my parents grew and this is the same kind of cucumbers basically that they just grow all over the Middle East and it's perfect for pickling. And over here also I planted some Armenian cucumber, uh, yeah, up against the trellis. I can see them right here. They're starting to pop right here. You see them and right there. And in the back over here we have some, uh, what do I have here? This is... What's it called? I forgot its name. It's a type of brassica. Um, it has a purple head at the bottom. It doesn't make any head at the top, but the you eat the... Well, you can eat the leaves too, but it makes a head at the bottom. What was What's it called? Uh, kohlrabi, yes. This is kohlrabi and this is the Italian dandelion. And that's the spinach. Spinach. So. It went to seed while it was still in its cell trays and the reason why I planted it is because I want to harvest the seeds and I thought I might as well just plant it and harvest the seeds because I want the seed saved and I know these are not going to be the best seeds because they are from really small plants but it's better than nothing so in case if next year I won't be able to get any seeds I'll have more seeds uh, from these plants over here. And on this side, this is the, um, oh yeah, that's a Melro Nero spinach. What, what are these over here? This is May Queen lettuce. Um, I transplanted them again from the cell trays and it was super hot when I did transplant all this. So they were struggling a little bit, all these things, because we had a heat wave at that time. We were having some 90 something degrees Fahrenheit and uh, this is not good for any of these plants and this is why the spinach bolted um, and they these are starting to head up and I'll be I can start harvesting from them now if I want to or I can leave them to form heads and harvest then and this is the strawberry spinach uh oh some of it is also bolting I can harvest this right now again I really am super disappointed <laughs> with the compost I feel like Things would have done better if I didn't add this compost, but oh well. Now over here we have this uh, black-eyed Susan uh, Rubecchia, two of them on each side of the bed. These just popped on their own and I left them because I thought they looked beautiful in here. And they bring pollinators too. And then we have some onions in here. Uh, what type of onion in here? This is yellow of... Uh, Panama. This is yellow of Panama onions. You can see some of them are bigger than others. And over here, I think this is the, um, oh, also yellow of Panama. Wow, I have two yellow of Panama beds? Yeah. Um, and over here, I have some uh, black peony poppy peony poppy on this side and these are the purple peony poppies on this side one of them didn't make it over here in the middle and these are plantain they popped on their own I uh, these are edible uh, 
they are uh, treated as a weed but I thought you know their leaves act sort of as a ground cover and I'm doing an experiment to see if it helps the onions or not but so far I see that the ones growing next to it are not doing super well except for this one over here so I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about them we'll see what happens but I can harvest the leaves if I want to and cook with them or if they are tender I can use them in salads so I'm just this is just an experiment to see if it is better to leave them as sort of a, a living mulch or to not leave them <laughs> we'll see <laughs> oh look I have a poppy over here I'm not gonna mess with it I could have planted it there I guess but I'm just gonna leave it right here and this is tipping over oh I gotta fix all these onions over here you can see there's just something that's eating them there are little holes all over them and I have no idea what's doing that and some seeds have been just devoured to death already seedlings uh, on this side I have the Nagasaki a, a turnip and over here Tokinashi turnip and this is the daikon radish and that is the Nevada what's it called Nevada yellow rutabagas over here so I'm going to have to seed some of these things again so these are the old beds and now over here if we turn around on this side my husband haven't built the other beds yet he's still working on them he uh, painted them with a uh, linseed oil if you guys want to know how to build your own raised beds I will be linking that video at the end of this video these are the beds that he built himself I'm gonna put these aside so that you guys don't have to see them <laughs> this whole throughout the whole video um, and I still have this area and I was just thinking also I might as well just do this area and just finish the infrastructure for this year and then next year everything would be ready and I don't have to worry about it so over here um, I still need to come and do some tomato staking I'll probably film a video on that as well for you guys uh, but I this is how I do single stemming tomatoes and uh, you can see they're all doing amazing. I had this cover on them after I planted them and then when it started to warm up a little bit I removed the cover. They were also getting super tall so and I didn't want them to get squished. At that time I brought the stakes and I staked them all. I still have a few tomatoes in the, at the back over there that I do have to stake and I'll be doing that soon. And in the middle I have the uh, these are dwarf tomatoes the tom thumb tomatoes and some of them are doing better than others i'm not sure what the deal is they're all fertilized the same and they all get watered the same so i don't know what the deal is the one over there in the back is doing great i'll show you in a second but they are all starting to flower uh oh this one is curling i think there's some stress happening here yeah, I'm going to be pruning them and staking them, this one too. It's doing a little curling. I think it's getting a little bit too cold at night. This, so I broke a couple plants of tomatoes and I ended up uh, leaving two in their pots because they looked like they're about to die. It was this one and that one over there. And in their place, there were two tomato plants that I broke off when I was planting and I just gave them a chance to see if they live or not and they ended up dying so I left these in their pots and they started developing leaves so uh, I brought them back over here and I planted them you know sometimes if you don't give up on plants they can make it so these won't be you know super great but they will give me something and I don't know what kind of tomatoes they are uh, because I lost the labels and then I also planted some basil. You can start seeing it right here. I have some purple basil. I think I might have planted some other type of basil also, I'm not sure. And this is the Tom Thumb tomato that I was telling you about. And in the middle I also planted, between the tomatoes I planted marigold seeds. 
and they're starting to pop up too over here. If you guys want to learn more about tomatoes, I have a video on tomatoes specifically that I'll also be linking it uh, at the end of this video and in the description box. I have a video about a lot of stuff that I have in here. I also have a specific video about the fava beans. I'll be linking it down also in the description box. Now on this side, I know it just looks like it's just a bunch of weeds, but I did plant some seeds over here on the edge of the bed and I think, I don't know if I planted something in here. I don't think so, but I am going to be planting strawberries in here and this, I think this is uh, the blue borad, borage or borage, how do you say that? I don't know. Um, some of them didn't come up. Looks like something dug them, or no, that's me weeding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of them didn't come up, so it's okay. And over here, I think I, I don't know what I planted. What did I plant over here? I planted on the edge over here something. It was a type of flower, I think. I'm not sure what it is, but it was a pretty flower. And then I planted some fennel and some celery seeds in here. Um, I harvest celery pretty early. I don't wait for it to like form a head. I like to use the leaves just as well as the stem. I am getting something here. I wonder if that's celery, I don't know doesn't look like it I don't know <laughs> I didn't put any labels or anything I should have done that but I didn't have the time to and over here these are super sad I didn't fertilize anything in here I should come back and fertilize but over here I have some I think broccoli um, I do have to fertilize them and they did have some aphid damage on them and the heat damage and all that and this is the purple some type of russian kale purple russian kale i forgot its name and on the side i'm not sure what i planted over here but i know over there i have some purple prince zinnias and i'm gonna be finishing this bed also with some stuff that i have and i have a grapevine that i'm going to be planting in that bed over there either in the front or I think in the front yeah right there and I still have some lots of stuff potatoes and sweet potatoes and peppers and all sorts of things that are going to be going over here and you can see the fruit trees I keep forgetting to prune the bottom of this tree <laughs> but I'll be coming back and pruning it I almost forgot I also want to give you a quick update on the asparagus you can see that it's all doing great it's starting to put some growth and some of them are sending new shoots you can see this one right here and i will be coming back and adding some i forgot the name of the fertilizer but it's specially designed for the roots it has specific things for root development uh turns out that asparagus likes a, a neutral ph better than an acidic ph ph because uh, they tend to face root rot in a um, what's it called, furasium root rot in a more acidic environment and if they are growing in a neutral environment uh, they tend to have less of that problem and it looks like over here I got some uh, type of pumpkin I don't know if this is the sugar daddy or I don't know some sort of a pumpkin that I or sugar pie, oh, probably sugar pie pumpkin I could be wrong though. Some sort of pumpkin, pumpkin that I grew last year seeded itself over here. So I think I'm just gonna leave them, let them do their thing, and if we get pumpkins out of them, that's good. And here's a quick update on the blueberries. This one has tons of berries on it. And you can see that the new growth is a little bit on the reddish side and sort of yellow also, and that's because of the pH level that we have here. Even though I added soil acidifier, it is it does take time for that to get activated into the soil and because we are having rain it is going to get into the soil better 
and I will be testing the soil again in about a month or two from now and seeing how this um, how the soil has changed. If it didn't change enough, I'll be adding some more soil acidifier. And if you guys want to learn more about how to grow, grow blueberries, I'll leave a link for that video down in the description box below. And this is the other blueberry. It just has a couple blueberries on it, but it seems to be doing a little better than the other one. Um, there is some redness on it, but uh, again, I'll be testing the soil. This one looks a little yellow. It looks like it needs some staking too. So things are not doing as well as I would like them to. And there are a lot of weeds and there's constant work, you know, in the garden. It never, work never ends. You constantly have to tend to it. It's sort of like a child. <laughs> but um, this is... Uh, my humble tour over here and I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is just kind of a quick update on how things are doing and I feel like this has been so far disappointing but I'm keeping my hopes up. Um, you know things don't always work the way how you expect them to. I was hoping the compost would help but it didn't. It seems like the beds that where I have the compost at the bottom of the beds they are doing better, like the tomato bed over here. Tomato, the tomatoes are doing great and um, live and learn, I guess. Right, live and learn. So this is only the beginning of the season. I still have tons of planting to do and tons of work and there are so many good things to come. I also, hopefully today if it doesn't rain and if I have time. I will be filming a video on the new flower bed that I'm making. I'm going to be planting the flowers, the lupins and um, whatever flowers I have left. <laughs> and um, I'll see what next. Alright, so I want to thank you guys for watching and if you like this video please hit the like button and if you are new here don't forget to subscribe. And see you again next time. Bye!